Hi everyone, it's Tracy from our small holding adventure. It's Monday night and I'm sat here shelling broad beans. So normally I would be doing um, a recipe from grandma's wartime recipe book. But given that it's the busiest time of the year here on the small holding and that we are in full on harvest season for ourselves, for us, um, I wanted to start sharing with you some of the recipes that I use frequently and some of the recipes that I've decided to try that I've never actually tried before. Um, broad beans, once they start coming, they come thick and fast. And generally, there's only me that likes them. Uh, Stephen will eat them. The kids can't stand them, but they eat them because they know that there's some, uh, they're good for them. There's some health benefits. Um, but I do know that a bit like courgettes or zucchinis, there'll come a point in the season where they downright refuse to eat any more. <laughs> so I'm looking for alternate ways that I can um, I can hide these in um, some of their food or celebrate them as a main part of the meal um, and hopefully make them taste a little bit different to what they used to. So I'm looking tonight, um, the first method that I'm going to try to, to do is to make a, a broad bean dip. Um, so it's not hummus, there's no tahini in it, um, but I have no idea how this is going to turn out and the recipe actually calls for 300 grams of broad beans. Now it's going to take me, it's about 25 to 8. I feel like I've been sat here for six days shelling these already. In reality I think I've only been here for about four minutes before I started the video um, and I've got 80 grams so <laughs> you may be here some time with me. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is instead of doing a wartime recipe every Monday night from my grandma's recipe book, I'll probably do those every other week um, and I'll, I'll alternate um, with some seasonal recipes. Um, so it'll be very much broad, broad bean this week. Um, broad beans will feature again, um, but then we've got lots of other things um, growing at the moment. So I'll share some of those um, and let you know how they turn out. So this recipe calls for 300 grams of broad beans, as I say. We're nearly on 100 grams now. I've picked all the baby ones, so maybe I should have just picked the big ones for this. And 300 grams of peas. So I do have some as well in my basket here that an absolutely lovely friend gave me. I love with the baskets. Anyway, distracted. Um, as well as broad beans, I've got purple podded peas in my little basket, there won't be 300 grams worth there. So what I'll do is top them up with frozen peas from the freezer. And you need the juice of two lemons and a couple of garlic cloves. I think if memory serves me right, I'll have to check. So I'm gonna get on out shelling these and I'll come back to you once I've got 300 grams worth, which feels like it might be about three days time. We're on about 250 grams now, so I'm not doing too bad. It's only just after quarter to eight. We haven't lost hours. Um, it occurred to me whilst I was uh, sat here, mulling things over, podding broad beans, um, that one of the last videos that we did, um, or that I did, was around the grocery um, shopping. And we've just passed the six week mark. Um, so I did say that I wasn't going to go shopping um, for six weeks. Um, and that I would give you an update on how that went. Um, to be honest, it went really well. Um, we didn't make it to six weeks, so um, I'm not going to pretend that we did. Um, we kind of made it to five weeks um, and we could have gone longer, but I didn't want the kids sort of missing out on certain things that, um, you know, that it was purely to, to, to meet the challenge that I was um, saying that we couldn't have certain things. Um, so there was certain items that we ran out of a lot, a lot more quickly than anticipated. Um, so things like butter, honey, um, oats, breakfast oats that we have every day. Um, the kids, things that they have such as uh, chocolate spreads or things like that. They ran out really quickly. Um, sliced ham. So we still buy sliced ham from, from well, wherever we go, Aldi or the butchers or whatever it might be. Um, and cheese, goodness me, we went through cheese so quickly, but I think that was because we were making a lot of frittatas and I was just putting cheese on, well, everything, as you do. Funnily enough though, when we ran out, we didn't 
We missed it from the point of view that it was, oh, where's the cheese? We usually have cheese with this, but we didn't miss it from the, from the taste point of view. So that was interesting. Needless to say though, um, when I did go back, so I went back to Aldi on Friday, it's Monday now. Um, and sorry, Friday a week ago. So that was, that was the fifth week, so not the sixth week. Um, and of course I bought cheese. Um, among amongst other things so I think the purpose of the challenge to me was to prove that we could go um, for, for a length of time you know given that there's a global pandemic and things like that going on that we could go for a length of time using up what we've got um, in the pantry in the freezer in the fridge um, but more importantly what we're growing um, and I think that I've proved to myself that we can absolutely do that um, however we 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 aren't as stocked up um we aren't as stocked up in the freezer and things that as uh, now as i would like to be so in the next few days i'm going to start recording some do i'm going to start recording some um freezer batch cooking um i'm not sure how i'm going to go about doing that just yet but the reality is at the moment i'm still working from home um and although that fits in really well with our lifestyle and i'm actually more getting more done at home um there's going to come a point where everything's going to go back to normal and we're expected to be back out to work full time as well so i would like to prepare for that um and get as many things in the freezer as possible um also just in case anything does happen from a, a wave two point of view of this whole pandemic coronavirus situation um i'm not necessarily concerned about how we'll handle it it's more that i can't be done with the whole running out of toilet roll and um all of that situation again i prefer to just be able to come home and not get involved with all the craziness that's going on um with people buying all, all items that i just don't understand so anyway i think i'll do something on that in the coming um few days i'll take you along for that too in the meantime this last broad bean is taking us to 300 grams so i don't think i was clear um earlier on in the, the recipe that to make um, this broad bean dip calls for 300 grams, grams of broad beans and 300 grams of peas. Um, so when I said I don't think I'll have 300 grams of peas, that's why. So we need 300 grams of each. Um, so 300 grams of broad beans, looks like that, takes, what, 10 or 15 minutes at the most to shell them um, on your own at a kind of leisurely pace. So quite happy to do that again. So I'm hoping that this recipe is going to turn out to be quite nice. Um, so I'm actually going to be a bit of a cheat and given in the interest of time, I've got so many other things to do as we all do on a Monday night and every other night. Um, I'm just going to use frozen peas. So I'll go grab those out. I'll get my two garlic cloves um, which we've actually just harvested as well. They're awesome. I'm so happy about that. Um, and my lemon juice. I'm not using fresh lemons. We've got um, lemon concentrate in the fridge. Um, so I generally, I will use lemon concentrate because you know what you're getting with that. And I'm just not worried about them going off or having to use them by a certain time. Um, and it's also the, the, right um, the right level of acidity and things like that for, for certain recipes that can be a bit fussy in that respect. Um, okay, so I'm going to go grab the peas and I'll show you what I'm doing. So these are two of our homegrown bulbs of garlic. They are so fat and amazing and absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to peel them. So I've peeled the garlic and I'm just slicing it quite thinly. Um, and I'm going to cook this gently for about three or four minutes in some sunflower oil because I want to kind of create a bit of a, a garlic oil. So the kettle's on, bringing that to the boil. I've chopped the garlic. Um, so that's ready just to fry off for three or four minutes um, in some oil. Um, when the kettle boils, I'm going to cook the broad beans and the peas um, just for three minutes, then shove them in some cold water um, just to, st to stop the cooking process. Um, and then we'll try and combine the lot in, um, and then we'll combine the lot in a food processor 
and add in the garlic oil that we're going to create from, from cooking this garlic off in some oil now. This pan is ready, boiling away. So as I said, my 300 grams of peas are frozen. So because of their size, they will be absolutely fine. I don't want to come out. Absolutely fine going in with the broad beans um, because they can go in from frozen. No problem at all with fresh broad beans. We'll take the temperature of the water down a little bit. But that's okay. And the garlic is just frying away. Did I just spill that everywhere? No. We'll give that three or four minutes um, for the garlic and then we'll set that to one side. As soon as the peas come back to the boil, we'll get the broad beans in and then set the timer. These are, these are the broad beans and peas that are left. So what I'll do is actually shell those and pop them straight into the freezer. No need to blanch them or anything. And then I can make this recipe or another recipe straight from the freezer. These are the leftover frozen peas that I've used. So I'm gonna put those straight back in the freezer now. And then at least we'll have something there preserved, ready to use just when we need it at any time of the year. These have been cooking for three minutes and now I've just emptied them out and soaking them in cold water take out any residual heat. I've put as many of the broad beans and peas into a blender jug that I can fit in. I used just my jam funnel to help me do that. There's a few left over. So I'm going to blend this now. Um, this is going to be interesting. And then I'll add the remainder just when I can fit them in. I'm not going to lie, this isn't going to plan. So I'm going to go and grab the um, garlic and oil. Um, I'm just going to add, hang on, I need to watch this. A bit of lemon juice, maybe a tablespoon. I'll go and get the garlic and the oil. I'm going to give this a mix because there's still a load at the bottom that hasn't quite um, zuzzed up yet. And then we'll see what it looks like. After much ado, we've managed to get this whizzed up in the blender. It took a little bit of um, encouragement, shall we say. I've added two tablespoons of lemon juice to it and plenty of salt, about a teaspoon of salt and a good sprinkle, well, more than a sprinkle of black pepper. Um, so I've got my little test, taste tester here now. So let's see what it tastes like. A lot more than anticipated. That is like a breakfast cereal bowl size. Um, it's absolutely huge. I need to inquire if you can freeze this. I don't see why not. So my unassuming taste tester is here. He didn't know this was happening. So he's just got out of the shower for bed. So this is going to be a very honest review. Mm. Is that a no from Jack? Stay. I know you're busy with your daughter, but here's one massive bowl of broad bean dip. God, that's just what it smells like as well. Right. Whizzed up broad bean. That's not that bad actually. Just tastes like mushy peas. So Stephen and Grace are busy taking the keyboard apart for some art project. Um, I won't it's be eating good. all of this tonight, but it's actually quite nice. Um, maybe not for Jack, maybe not for Grace. Stephen's definitely going to be eating it, he might not know it yet, um, and I'm going to be having it as well. But to be fair, it's a super healthy broad bean dip. What more do you expect? Thanks for watching along with us tonight, guys. If you like these kind of videos, not necessarily the taste of the recipes, but if you like these kind of videos, then please give us a like and subscribe. And there'll be plenty more to come as always. But for now, stay safe.